Despite the best efforts of the mainstream media to convince us that the Three Eye Atlas story is over and we need to move on to other issues, the object refuses to disappear. Not only is there new information related to the CIA, a rather strange detail about Three Eye Atlas, but also a new image was taken by the Virtual Telescope Project less than a week ago. And although this image appears to show just an ordinary comet, it actually reveals a mysterious interstellar object continuing to spew a tail against the solar wind. This jet-like tail extends for a distance of at least 500,000 kilometer, sometimes even a million kilometer further than the distance from Earth to the moon. This is just one of many things about 3i Atlas that remain unexplained and one that absolutely must be explained before we allow it to move through the galaxy, assuming it actually does. But now, to the surprise of most people, a Freedom of Information Act request has been sent to the CIA by an organization I trust, an organization that only provides factual information about the mysteries and phenomena of the world. And the CIA's response has shocked most people. Good morning to the extraterrestrial mystery community. Although I've deliberately avoided mentioning UFOs, the Three Eye Atlas, or any similar topics today, the flow of news seems to make no room for that. New and increasingly intriguing information continues to emerge surrounding this mysterious object. And this time, the source is none other than the CIA, through a Freedom of Information Act request recently sent to the agency directly related to the Three Eye Atlas. Notably, the details surrounding this request continue to raise more questions than answers, fueling speculation that is hard to ignore. The aforementioned request was filed by Black Vault. The name easily evokes conspiracy theories or sensational stories, but the reality is quite different. Black Vault has long been known for its rigorous, methodical, and credible investigations into UFO reports and other global mysteries. This organization consistently adheres to original documents and verified data, avoiding emotional sensationalism, and only publishing what can be verified. This scientific caution makes the documents related to the CIA and 3I Atlas even more noteworthy, because in modern research it is sometimes information gaps more than official explanations that spark curiosity and quietly spread theories. After everything was clarified, Black Vault officially submitted a request to the CIA, asking them to release all the information they possessed regarding the Three Eye Atlas. The result at first glance was unsurprising, as it was typical CIA practice. However, what is noteworthy is that they did not claim to have no information about the Three Eye Atlas, nor did they say they had never investigated or been interested in the subject. Conversely, in its cautious and administrative wording, the CIA provided a response that, within the context of the agency's characteristic language, could be interpreted as an indirect acknowledgement that it possesses certain information about the Three Eye Atlas. This is the key point that makes this response particularly noteworthy for analysis. To clarify this, it's necessary to look back at exactly what the CIA said and compare it to historical precedents in how they responded to requests under the Freedom of Information Act. Understanding the language, structure, and implications of such documents is crucial because if we interpret the CIA's response mechanically and without context, we risk overlooking crucial details. Because if the CIA truly had no data, if they were completely unaware of the Three Eye Atlas and had never paid any attention to it, the simplest and most straightforward answer would be a statement that there was no stored information. But that wasn't their response. Instead, the CIA chose a completely different wording, and this difference is now at the heart of bigger questions. Okay, let me emphasize again, you don't need to wait until the very end to know what the CIA actually said. However, to fully understand the meaning of this response, it needs to be placed in the specific context of the information request that was just sent. According to official records, the Freedom of Information Act request, numbered F-2026-000231, was sent to the CIA by John Greenwald of Black Vault on November 12th, 2025. The request directly targeted 3I Atlas, asking the CIA to provide any assessments, reports, or information it held relating to 3I Atlas or the 3I Atlas interstellar object from June 1st, 2025 to the present. This is a narrow enough time frame to rule out speculation, but sensitive enough to touch upon ongoing intelligence activities. By December 31st, 2025, the CIA had issued what it called the GLOMAR response. 
This is a historically significant term in the U.S. administrative and intelligence system, and its true meaning will be analyzed in more detail later. However, the content of the CIA's response clearly stated that they had completed their review of the request and determined that, pursuant to Section 3.6a of Executive Order 13526, the CIA could neither confirm nor deny the existence or non-existence of the records related to this request. More importantly, the CIA emphasized that even the very existence of these records was classified. Their argument was that this information directly related to intelligence sources and methods and was protected from disclosure under Section 6 of the CIA Act of 1949. In intelligence jargon, this is a term rarely used for subjects that are completely unknown or of no interest. Following this response, John Greenwald announced he would formally appeal the rejection decision. This move suggests that the story of the Three Eye Atlas is likely far from over, and the CIA's Glomar response, instead of closing the issue, is inadvertently opening up a new layer of mystery, where the lines between scientific research, national security, and unproven theories are blurred more than ever. What has drawn considerable attention is that, to date, no Freedom of Information Act requests have been filed with the CIA concerning Oumuamua or 2i Borisov, two interstellar objects that previously caused a stir in astronomy. Yet for some reason, Black Vault deemed 3i Atlas important enough to warrant such a request, something unprecedented for similar objects in the past. This discrepancy raises questions about why 3i Atlas is being placed in such a special position and many have expressed a desire to see a similar request applied to Oumuamua for a clearer comparison. Astrophysicist Avi Loeb was quick to comment on this development. He found the CIA's response surprising, as the agency seemed to be deeming information related to 3i Atlas sensitive enough to be classified, while NASA officials had reached a completely definitive conclusion. At a press conference on November 19, 2025, NASA firmly stated that 3i Atlas is simply a comet of purely natural origin. According to Avi Loeb, if this conclusion was indeed clear from the beginning to the entire government and academic community, as NASA has publicly stated, then the CIA's continued refusal to confirm or deny the existence of the relevant records becomes puzzling. The question arises as to why the possibility of documents concerning a naturally occurring comet, as officially described, is considered sensitive enough to be classified as secret. This contradiction continues to fuel suspicion, preventing the story of 3i Atlas from being simply resolved. Incidentally, Dr. Avi Loeb also revealed that he recently received a question from a journalist regarding the latest effort by the Breakthrough Listen Initiative to examine radio signals emanating from the 3i Atlas. According to recently published data from SETI, during the five-hour observation period from 0415 to 0915 UTC on December 18, 2025, no narrowband radio signals were detected, or at least none were reliable enough to be considered noteworthy. However, Dr. Loeb also emphasized that the very assumption that a technologically advanced object would actively transmit radio signals toward an observer is far from certain. On the astronomical scale, radio signals take tens of thousands of years to travel through the Milky Way, while the time that 3i Atlas spent inside the solar system, assuming a constant velocity, would only be about 16,000 years. According to his argument, interstellar objects have almost no incentive to maintain continuous signal transmission back to their origin, as their journeys span billions of years and do not allow for any form of two-way communication. Therefore, the probability of a signal being transmitted precisely within a short five-hour observation period is extremely low. Furthermore, if a signal does exist, it may not be transmitted toward Earth or within the frequency range that radio telescopes are monitoring. From a technical standpoint, to optimize energy consumption, an efficient communication system would likely transmit signals as short, heavily compressed pulses with very small duty cycles, rather than continuous broadcasting. Therefore, a serious observation program, from a scientific perspective, would require monitoring the 3i atlas from multiple directions and over an extended period, rather than being limited to a single observation window lasting only a few hours. And it is here that a sensitive question begins to emerge. Is the CIA conducting similar observational efforts, but on a different scale and scope? And if so, are they obtaining results different from what is publicly available from the civilian scientific community? Many might argue that this isn't a major concern. 
The familiar phrase, we can neither confirm nor deny the existence of any relevant information is, after all, just a roundabout way of avoiding admitting ignorance. But in reality, things aren't that simple. This particular type of response has existed since the early 1970s and, historically, has rarely been synonymous with nothing noteworthy. As mentioned earlier, this is known as the Glomar response, a term derived from the CIA's top secret operation involving the Hughes Glomar Explorer. Essentially, it's a legal tactic that allows a government agency to refuse to confirm or deny the existence of records when faced with a request under the Freedom of Information Act. The origins of this approach are linked to the Cold War context, specifically the mid-1970s. In 1975, the CIA faced a Freedom of Information Act inquiry concerning Project Azorian, a top-secret program to salvage a sunken Soviet submarine. At the time, the CIA couldn't simply declare its non-involvement, as that would be untrue, but it also couldn't confirm the program without revealing a highly classified operation. The Glomar response arose from this dilemma. The courts subsequently recognized and strengthened the legality of the Glomar response. Precedented cases, such as the 1976 case of Philip versus CIA, established that this response could be invoked when confirming or denying the existence of a record could cause identifiable harm. Such harm includes the disclosure of intelligence sources, methods of information gathering, or national security details protected by the Freedom of Information Act's waivers. Therefore, when a Glomar response appears, it is rarely a sign of information emptiness. Theoretically, a Glomar response doesn't automatically mean the CIA definitely possesses the relevant files. In rare cases, it can still be used even if no documents exist, if simply confirming no files is enough to reveal sensitive information. For example, denying the existence of surveillance records for a specific individual could inadvertently reveal that person is not under surveillance, thereby alerting the adversary or impacting ongoing intelligence priorities. However, when this logic is applied to the case of 3i Atlas, the question becomes more difficult to explain. How could the CIA's claim that it wasn't tracking or had any information about an interstellar object publicly monitored by the global scientific community ultimately compromise any of its secrets? This very lack of conviction leads many to believe that there must have been some level of interest or activity related to 3i Atlas, enough to trigger a Glomar response. Looking back at historical precedent, Glomar responses typically appear in cases where records actually exist, but acknowledging their existence would have detrimental security or intelligence consequences. Government agencies are not compelled to use Glomar if they truly have nothing to hide. In non-sensitive situations, they can simply respond that there is no relevant data without incurring any risk. Therefore, the CIA's proactive choice to cite Glomar's response is often seen as an indirect signal that the topic in question touches upon sensitive issues. In such a situation, the line between transparency and confidentiality becomes blurred, and any confirmation, whether affirmative or negative, risks revealing something they don't want to make public. A notable precedent often cited is the 2013 lawsuit between the ACLU and the CIA. At that time, the CIA used the Glomar response to Freedom of Information Act requests regarding U.S. drone operations abroad, arguing that confirming or denying would reveal classified information. However, this position did not hold up in court. The Washington, D.C. District Court of Appeals ruled that the CIA's argument was neither reasonable nor plausible pointing out that a number of high-ranking U.S. officials, including President Barack Obama, then-CIA Director Leon Panetta, and National Security Advisor John Brennan, had publicly acknowledged the program's existence and the CIA's role in official statements. In this context, continuing to cite Glomar's response was seen as contradicting widely publicized facts. This ruling implies that the relevant records do indeed exist, and the outcome of the case is that the CIA was forced to disclose some of the information. This shows there is a clear precedent in which subjects previously shielded by Glomar responses are eventually brought to light, at least to a certain extent. However, history also shows that this is not always the case. In many other instances, Glomar's response has persisted for a long time, even permanently, making the official silence itself part of a mystery that has never been solved. In summary, historically, Glomar feedback has rarely been used in situations where the CIA had absolutely no information on a subject. 
This opens the possibility that the agency may have considered or at least assessed low-risk, high-stakes scenarios, often referred to as black swan events. In that context, a Trojan horse type hypothesis cannot be entirely ruled out, whereby 3i Atlas could be viewed as an alien probe cleverly disguised as a natural object. If such a scenario had ever been considered, the CIA would naturally have had a strong incentive to verify or refute it, not out of belief in fictional theories, but because any possibility, however small, of a potential threat to U.S. national security must be seriously evaluated. Following that logic, it is entirely possible that the CIA concluded that the 3i Atlas posed no threat and contained nothing unusual or concerning. However, the problem lies in the fact that publishing this conclusion could have unintended consequences. Any confirmation risks revealing the CIA's true observational capabilities, including access to reconnaissance satellites, telescopes, or data collection systems sophisticated enough to track and analyze 3i Atlas. And clearly, the CIA has little incentive to publicly disclose such capabilities, even if the final conclusion is nothing to worry about. In this context, the role of Black Vault becomes particularly noteworthy. The organization is closely monitoring the entire situation and has formally appealed the CIA's response. With extensive experience in pursuing Freedom of Information Act requests, Black Vault seems to consider this a case significant enough to pursue to the end. The goal is not only to find direct answers about 3i Atlas, but also to see whether the CIA, under legal pressure and historical precedent, can be persuaded to disclose even a small fraction of the information it possesses. From a personal perspective, there is reason to believe that the CIA assessed the 3i Atlas as sensitive enough to warrant deploying military surveillance capabilities, including reconnaissance satellites and strategic surveillance telescopes, to gather as much data as possible. Whether those efforts uncovered anything unusual remains an unanswered question, and perhaps only when the truth is revealed, if it ever did, will we know. The only thing that can be confirmed at this time is that the scientific community's public observational efforts to find technological signs from 3i Atlas, such as radio signals, have yielded no clear results. However, it should be emphasized that radio telescopes were only pointed at 3i Atlas for very limited periods, each lasting only a few hours, scattered over many months of observation. This only allows us to conclude that no narrowband radio signals were detected during those brief periods, but it is by no means sufficient to conclude that 3i Atlas emitted no signals of any kind as it traveled through the solar system. From a theoretical standpoint, the question is why an extraterrestrial probe? if it exists, would need to constantly transmit signals unless its purpose was to actively communicate with us. If the communication were directed toward a main base, assumed to be somewhere near the galactic core, then radio signals would take tens of thousands of years to reach it. Even in a more optimistic scenario where the point of origin is only a few hundred light years away, that waiting time would still be incredibly long for any form of two-way communication. Therefore, continuous signal transmission seems to offer little benefit. A more plausible scenario, if the technological hypothesis is sound, is to transmit strong intermittent signals to convey data over very long periods, perhaps every few decades or even every few centuries. In that context, the probability of a human accidentally encountering a signal transmission within a few hours of observation is extremely low. Furthermore, there is no guarantee that an advanced civilization would use radio communication in the way we are familiar with. Other forms of communication, such as lasers or highly directional microwaves, are both more energy efficient and harder to detect and do not necessarily need to be aimed at Earth. This makes the nothing detected a more ambiguous fact than a definitive negative conclusion. In short, to date, we still lack sufficient data to draw any definitive conclusions about the true nature of 3i Atlas, despite the emphatic statements from NASA and mainstream science. The information gap remains, and it continues to leave many possibilities open. At least for now, from a personal perspective, it is neither possible to confirm nor deny that 3i Atlas is simply a comet or some other type of object that is not yet fully understood. Thank you so much for watching until the end. If you found this content interesting, please show your support by liking and subscribing to the channel. See you again.